Hey everybody, welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler, and this is Deserts and Taxes. So as you can see, our opponent leading off on Temple Triumph. Uh, if I had to guess, that means they're on a um, red-white prison deck. So I don't know what kind of matchup that is for us. I know that uh, this Ether Vial should be pretty good. We don't have any white mana, which is occasionally a problem for the deck, but we're going to have a bunch of golems. So that's good. Oh. 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 Fire main angel. Interesting. Well, I guess he's going to gain a life. Hmm. It's in your upkeep. If it's in your graveyard or on the battlefield, you gain a life. 10 mana, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield during your upkeep. Okay, don't care about that, so... Alright. Ooh, Leon and Arbiter's a nice one, though. Um... So, it's like kind of awkwardly, we can't do anything with this mana, uh, but it will work out because we can file in the Thraben Inspector, crack uh, crack the clue at the end of the turn so we make use of our mana. The next turn we can Leon an Arbiter and start attacking their lands uh, with a Ghost Quarter. Interesting, Needle Spice, okay. And we're basically leaning on our Aether Vol here to do all the work for us this game, no need to... To, 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 honestly, we can just get rid of our Ghost Quarter. It's not going to matter because we're just going to vile this game to oblivion. All right, so we'll go ahead and crack the crew clue here. Of course, we need planes and everything looks way better anyways. Or a path. Can't cast that one. All right, vile up to two. Yep, still not doing much. So um, I have no idea what our opponent's doing. I think we may actually want mana at some point this game, so... And given that we have the path as well, I'm not going to... Well, I'm going to yield all the time to this. You can have all the life you want from that thing. Uh, I'm not going to go for the violin, ghost quarter you thing. We, we have so much value in our hand, um, especially given what our opponent's playing here. It looks like we're equipped to play the long game. My question is, do I want to violet in? I do. Yeah, we don't need to, you know, take the one land away from this. That's not what this game's going to come down to. Okay, well, good news is this thing can sit on three for a long time and make a lot of value for us. At this point, I may as well go ahead, I go ahead and go quarter, I guess. He's not doing anything. and don't really want to give him a chance to do anything. I would like to cast something, but... We're so far away from casting anything anyways, it just probably doesn't matter. We can go ahead and Tech Edge. Needle Spires here. Needle Spires can become a creature to slow us down, so that's, we don't really want to give him that opportunity. And look, he's going to bolt something. Oh, thinking about it, path something. Path would be annoying. Okay, <laughs> Blinding Helix or Arbiter. Uh, we'll go ahead, sure, go ahead and save the Arbiter. With the flicker wisp here. All right, so that works out. We get the needle spires off the field. We uh, waste his lightning helix thanks to flicker wisp. All that looks pretty good for us. Wonder if I should have waited to my end step to play around wrath. We could have made it so the Leon and Arbiter didn't come back until the end of his turn uh, by by doing what we just did in our end step. Might get punished for it here if he has wrath. I feel pretty good about this game overall, but still. Okay, yeah, it's just a main phase lightning helix this time around. Followed, ooh, a Luminarch Ascension, interesting. Okay, that's actually not the worst win condition for the uh, the prison deck. Okay, well, there's still no... Okay, all right. I'm going to try to get there on one land here. Yeah, so the Red White Prison deck, what it does is it just aims to lock you out with a bunch of removal, uh, etc. And then, you know, sometimes they win by Planeswalker. He looks like he's trying to win by Luminarch Ascension. I don't know what's what this is leading to here, but it's interesting. Now right, we're going to get the Blade Splicer number one down. Going to have a hard time getting counters on this Luminarch Ascension, that's for sure. Okay, well, that's... <laughs> I guess that's something. It does, in fact, produce mana. Alright, so we'll attack with the team here. 
knock our opponent down to 12. Pass a turn with a couple different options up with our Aether Vial. Our opponent could have some scary stuff, stuff here, to be honest. I don't know if Boros Signet is one of them, but... Okay, can I kill him? 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can do 12 if I put in another Blade Splicer. Uh, if I put in a Flicker Wisp, we'd have 6, we'd have Lethal. So we'll go ahead and put this Flicker Wisp in. Make him have an answer. Oh, I guess I needed to do it in the end step for that to matter, huh? Or the, the end of the main phase. It doesn't matter, he's going to kill our guy, but... Because it wouldn't have come back to Lara and stuff. Okay, that's good. That's a good lesson to keep in mind here for anybody watching. If you're trying to just blink it at the end of the turn, you should do, uh, do it at the end of the second main phase. All right, well, we'll get in with what we got here. It's crazy. We're 15 cards in. We haven't seen the planes yet. Now, I am cutting it a little low with only... Uh, like 12 white sources between the dunes, uh, the Sheffield dunes, I believe, and the and the tin planes. Uh, but still, it's fine. Opponent needs a wrath here. Or something. He's at six mana. Oh, gosh, okay. We're casting the fire main angel. Okay. So it's a flying first strike for a billion mana. I'm with you. Go ahead and put this other Blade Splicer in. We have a lot of damage, though, so... It doesn't have lifelink. Uh, we might have lethal. We'll see. Draw. Oh, I can just... Uh, all right, so we just have lethal. Uh, because we can just path it. We can Ghost Quarter ourselves. Which I'm actually going to need to do. That's funny. Okay. So we're actually going to have one land in this game. All right, path that thing and get on in there for lethal. Okay, well, that was a weird game. <laughs> Had no white mana the entire game until the very last turn when we ghost quartered ourselves to get it. We went with one land. All right, that works. Uh, so our opponent, huh? Red, white, angels, red, white, control is probably good, right? I'm worried about getting wrath, and he almost certainly has wrath. This isn't good. In fact, these are not great at all. Um, is Rest in Peace good? I kind of like the sword. Uh, protection from white. Sword's good. I think Dust of Dawn's probably good. Question is how many we want. I know that the Selfless Spirit's going to be good. Does We're on the draw, so whether Wayfinder is better. Um, hmm. What's the other cut? We could cut a Rusto Angel which because it's slow. I kind of want the uh, the other Destadon in here. Just to be able to buy back our creatures. I guess we also <laughs> technically have the uh, the old, where is it at? Scavenger Grounds out to the Raziels or whatever they are. Um, sure. I, I suspect that we have enough instance we have enough ways to save our creatures uh i need some value because it's like it's surely trying to grind us out so we just need to prevent that from happening and i think this is probably the best way to do it oh look punished again yeah definitely skimping on white sources here this hand would be sweet with the white source and not so good otherwise okay here we go uh, sure why not I love Thraven Inspector. It's such a cool card. It's so simple. This is what I love that 25 years now into Magic's um, future, you know, after the game came out, you still have just such simple, elegant cards. And I know, sure, Investigate sort of a, it's whatever, weird mechanic. It's certainly not Magic as Richard Garfield intended to make tokens that you sacrifice, etc. But in how it actually plays out, it's just beautiful because it's very simple. You play one mana, you get a small creature, you can cash it in for a card later. It's just... Uh, it's just, it's just very elegant, I believe is the right way to put it, and I very, very much enjoy Raven Inspector because of that. All right, let's go ahead and get in here for one. Start the beat down.
Okay, I don't know what our opponent wants to do exactly, but I do know that Thalia is probably pretty good against it. Next turn, we might just, we'll probably just play Thraven Inspector and crack a clue. Shevadun's so good, it even makes you see little Thraven Inspector is a thing. Oh wow, yeah, two mana to bolt that, absolutely. Plus one, one to your creatures, it's a nice way to, to get there. And we just rip another one, like a boss. Okay, Thraven Inspector. And Thalia, Guardian of Thraven, back down onto the field. Our opponent actually didn't even have a second land, or a third land, so that's pretty terrible for him. It's so good because you have to deal with it, especially when you can not overrun him, right? But you can give your team plus one, plus one with this card. Uh, and it makes your little Thraven Inspector a threat, but you're still going to cash him in for value. Uh, it's just it's just great. Opponent just got all the removal, but has no third land here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, crack a clue. Ether Vial, perfect. That's why we cracked a clue on our turn. And we still have the path to exile up if we need it. As the Thraben Inspector beatdown continues. All right, that's a Dawn be great. Um, our opponent plays something eventually, whatever, will kill it. But we can also then buy back all kinds of value from our own graveyard. So our opponent just sitting on like another tormenting voice. It's happened. The fireman angel's in the graveyard. And he found one. All right, that's fine. Put a count on underneath about here. Take it up to one. Flicker voice. Oh, all right. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I mind just playing it. I feel like with the Sedan in hand uh, and the path and these clues we're going to have, our opponent is under way more pressure. than Like, we don't need to be conservative with this and, you know, try to save our creature. Like, I don't tap this differently. Okay, there we go. Uh, our opponent has to... Is, is pretty far behind, right? So I don't mind just putting the pressure on, making them answer... Uh, getting lots of value over the long term because sure, we, you know, we can we get more blown out by a wrath or whatever here, but we have the dust of dawn to buy all kinds of stuff back later, and we have these clues. So, you know, overall, I still feel like I'm pretty in control of this game. Obviously, it doesn't mean it'll stand that way. Our opponent has seven cards in hand, and we have two, uh, but our opponent does have to worry about what we're doing on the field, at least a little. Yeah, there's a fourth land. And here comes the where. Okay, well, I guess that's why we didn't do it. <laughs> I am completely fine with that. All right, and uh, there goes the Flicker Wisp. Deal. Don't mind that much. Thraven Inspector continues to be boss. I haven't decided if Hostile Desert is good or not. Exile a land card from your graveyard. It becomes a 3-4 until end of turn. So, it is a desert. So, I don't know. It's it's not bad damage when you need it to be. Uh, okay, so I think what I'm going to do here is go ahead and crack a clue. See what we get. Seagate Wreckage. Okay, that's a nice one for later. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, fire this Tectonic Edge off here. Our opponent clearly wants mana. No reason to give it to him. We're doing perfectly fine here because we have these three bin inspectors for the beatdown. All right, our opponent gets a scry. It chooses to keep it on top. All right. And the sacred. All right, so our opponent finally is going to have mana. So we're going to get to the late game here. It's down to three cards, though. Ooh, weather wayfinder. Uh, we have five lands. He has four, so that's not going to do anything for a while. I'm just going to hold it, I think. Crack our clue here. Another tech edge. Well, maybe I messed up. Maybe I shouldn't have played the land first, and we could have cracked the clue into tech edge and tech edge away his fourth land. But that's fine. I feel like he played the signet anyway, so it's basically just sun titan. I think that would be a problem here. And even that, you know, meaning he'd have six man instead of five, or five instead of four, etc. I'm not too concerned here. Cathartic reunion. Oh, another fireman angel. In the graveyard. That's a lot of life. 
Another needle spies are gonna kill. These three even inspectors are MVPs. Our opponent would have so much life this game if it weren't for these. Ooh, another tech edge. Now we're talking. I don't know what he's trying to build up to, but we're not gonna let him get there. Uh, it is tempting. I do like. I do want to go get. I, I want to play the weathered wayfinder. One, two, three, four, five, and we have five. So I could try to hold off on the tech edges and play the weathered wayfinder to go get scavenger grounds and be able to get rid of his graveyard. Um, but honestly, I think I don't care. I think I just want to tech edge him out of the game. So and there's no point playing weathered wayfinder. Uh, if things go sideways and at some point later in the game we need, you know, he has more lands and then we can play this for value. Right now we're, we're actually just kind of treading ground with him where um, our Thraven Inspectors are matching his Fireman Angels in the graveyard. Um, but I, I still feel good about our overall plan. Let's see what this is. A Bale Fire Leech, okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. When you cast a red spell, you deal three damage to target player. When you cast a white spell, you gain three life. I mean, I'm going to path it. Well, maybe I'll wait. Okay. Oops. Ripped my headphones off. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take our turn back. Play the Tech Edge. Tech Edge, another one of his lands away. Play the Weathered Wayfinder. And pass the turn. So we have five lands. He has four. Uh, but if he plays a land, we will path the Bellfire Leech, which honestly we're probably going to have to do at some... Oh, yeah, I couldn't attack him. That's fine. Which we're going to have to do at some point anyways. Uh, and then we can Weathered Wayfinder for Scavenger Rounds. Yeah, this doesn't kill it. Okay, we'll path this. I won't lie, firing path off on this feels a little greedy, but we'll see what happens. Oh, rip. Okay, whatever. Weathered Wayfinder is no more. Now, the one pro yeah, see, the one problem with the getting scavenger grounds anyway is just that our graveyard is actually very good. So, I want to so much life. We are getting closer to uh, activating the Seeker Wreckage, though. I may as well just start on this thing. We're not doing anything else. Our opponent only has one card in hand, so I think we're good here. These Raven Inspectors have done, like, 15 damage at this point. Um... Gosh, it's, I wonder if there may be a point in the game where we just fire this off just to get Dawn. Well, I guess we'd only get back two Thalia, so maybe not. Pretty clearly not worth, I guess. But it'll be a good Wrath when you finally play something we care about. Discard another Wear Tear, sure. Alright, opponent has one card in hand, gaining a bunch of life. This deck's probably sick against aggro decks. Uh, there's a Luminar Extension, alright. Thank God we have these three inspectors. I don't think we have any ways to get lanes out of our graveyard, so I don't see any reason not to... Well, if he rafts or something, then we'll need to be able to use Hostile Desert to actually be able to get damage in so that this Illuminarch Ascension doesn't tick up. So maybe I'll hold the couple lanes we have in there for now. So yeah, still just treading water, basically, with uh, the 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 angels in his graveyard, uh, but that's it's fine, because if we get where we have to burn this thing, which at some point in the game we surely will, we will be able to start activating Seagate Wreckage, and we'll be able to dawn some stuff back. So basically, if he casts Wrath, he's in a lot of trouble, because it will, I, I say he's in a lot of trouble, it, it won't work out very well for him. Yeah, like I said, it is tempting to just fire this thing off so that we can start getting extra cards with this. Maybe I will. Let's see what we draw here. Ghost Quarter. Yeah, you know what? Why not? 
This may be the greedy. This is either smart or the greediest thing I've ever done. I don't know. It allows us to actually... Because this is just going to be stuck in our hand forever. Alright. Oops, can't do that. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, basically, holding Dustadon will be good at some point in the game later. Um, however, we may not even reach that point if we just start drawing two cards a turn. So... Uh, I think drawing two cards a turn is is way better because we still get the back half of this. Now, opponent's probably going to punch me here and play something huge, but. Hey, do the fire main angle. Well, clearly I got very punished for being greedy. However, life goes on. We're just going to go around this thing. Don't mind getting in with both three minutes factories and kill one, but we keep a counter off of this. It is kind of ironic. I, I I've debated on that for several turns, held off, and then got completely blown out at the end. But whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our opponent can actually bring him back from the graveyard at this point. Well, maybe that's really scary. Maybe I didn't think about that. Maybe I'm really bad. I don't know. I just wanted value. Is that so wrong? First strike, huh? Oh, we're in his upkeep. Here comes one. Gosh, I did get blown out because I could have killed them both. That's all right. I deserve to lose if I get if I get blown out here. I won't block. I refuse. I feel like our top decks are better here. I won't lie. Okay. Blink the Blade Splicer. We have two golems, which also have first strike and can attack, so that's good. That's a nice one. We can actually set up a double block now. Is this instant speed? Sorcery, okay. Our opponent's like is pretty interesting. I got I got greedy and I immediately got punished. That's kind of funny. In a way that's not really funny, but kind of funny. Alright, so if, uh, one, two, three, four. I can activate Seagate Wreckage no matter what. I guess there's no reason to ghost quarter and me has enough mana for everything anyways. These angels are gonna come back every turn, huh? I actually really need that scavenger dunes. Scavenger dunes would be great. Maybe the Chef at Dunes will give us an opportunity to overrun or something. I am definitely going for a double block, though. I think. What would the math look like? Is it 20? If we played this Angel, we'd have 9, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, plus a Chef at Dunes. We could take this hit and then try to, try to lethal him. Hmm. Might be worth... Well, sure, why not? If he drew a lightning bolt and kills us, whatever. I deserve to lose this game, to be honest. I punted. I got I got pretty greedy. Oh gosh, you got me. Okay, I uh, I decided we we're gonna. I decided that. I decided that I messed up and decided to lose. Is essentially what happened there. All right, our opponent seems to not have rats, so. But I guess I want. Okay, I guess we're, he's just literally gonna kill us with the graveyard, huh? I, I understand better what our opponent's doing now. I I did not understand before. Now I do. Now I know we just want to wreck his graveyard. It's apparently the only way he's actually going to win. Interesting. It was very... I don't, whatever. I don't know. Kind of felt like I deserved to lose, and I said, so, eh, whatever. If he has it, he has it. 
I feel like I punted that one pretty badly. Honestly, though, even if we had killed them with that first, with that Decidon, I don't actually know if it would have done anything, because we didn't have lethal. And I mean, double blocking those things is a losing proposition anyways. I think we had an opportunity to set up lethal, and it was correct to do so. Double blocking would have lost us one. We might have sawed lethal even with the double block, though. But he would have, yeah, because he couldn't have helixed it. But then we still wouldn't have the lethal because he would have healed one of our creatures. So it would have worked out the same regardless. Okay. So Avengers are pretty good on the play. Kind of like this. Whatever, probably not. Okay. Selfless Spirit seems fine. Because he could still... It would make sense for his deck to have Wraths. And we don't need this Forge Thunder. What kind of... Arbiter because our opponent's not trying to fetch a lot. Do I want any of the rest of this? Nah. Yeah. Alright, we'll give it a shot. If we lose to his deck, we lose to his deck. I, uh. Okay, well, this hand's sweet, so. He's got the wear tear, so that's annoying, but. Alright, well, we'll see what happens here. I feel like we're not supposed to lose, but I probably wasn't supposed to lose the last game either. I kind of uh, underestimated the ability to just paint a man and get a 4 3 first striker, I guess. And we didn't draw particularly well at all either. I mean, that's obviously a thing, but still. It's kind of funny. His deck got to do its thing. I kind of wanted to see what it did, and he killed us. Alright, we've got some nice stuff working here. We'll run out this fall, yeah. Begin the Thraben Inspector beatdown. Next time we can Blade Splicer. After that we can Graft Digger's Cage and Crack a crew, Clue. Be in position to start Seagate Rikaging. Let's see if he's gonna, yep. Fire off the lightning bolt on the fall, yeah, sure thing. Means uh, the Thraven Inspector beatdown continues, and now we get to play off Blade Splicer. Depending on what he does, next turn we might be able to flicker wisp with Blade Splicer. We'll see. Probably we'll be able to. If not, he lightning bolts a 1 1, that's fine too. Now we are getting a little set up to get blown out by Wrath in this game, but he hasn't shown us Wrath or Anger of the Gods or anything that I'd be concerned about. It doesn't mean they're not there, and in fact, honestly, they probably should be there, but we haven't seen them yet. Let's see what he does on this attack. If he just takes it... Okay, perfect. That's why we're holding this craft here's cage. Also, he would probably just take it if he was about to wrath or anger us, so I think this sort of clears the way a little bit. First, flicker wisp with blade splicer, get it right back. Go ahead and throw our cage down next time we can hopefully start drawing with Seagate Wreckage. I mean, with the Graft Digger's Cage, it's here before it matters. Um, there's obviously no Fire Main Angel in the graveyard or anything like that. Uh, but uh, still, we, we got him to use the wear tear on something else. <laughs> okay. If you would gain life, you pay two. When you've gained life, you pay two if you do a deal two damage. I like it. All right. Oh, would you rest in peace? I like it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and play rest in peace. And I'm going to tech edge his land. All right, I think we've dealt with the fire main problem this time around. We have him on three lands. And we're attacking for, what is this, a bunch of damage? Eight? That's a lot of damage. Dead in two turns. Not quite one turn. But... Now, I did lose my colorless source there um, by doing that to Seagate Wreckage. But we have the clue to pop for value. Oh my gosh, look at this. Gain life can pay two to kill our thing. Oh my gosh, the gain lands are so good. Sure. Why not? Alright, 
crack our clue here. Draw a path. Sweet. All right, selfless spirit. Now we have protection against any removal shenanigans. And we get to get in for five, which uh, puts a lethal on the board next turn. Don't have to worry about anything in the graveyard. Have a path for whatever else might happen over there. I've never seen a Windscarred Crag be so uh, devastating and modern as this Searing Meditation. All right, so the problem for our opponent here... Uh, this isn't, yeah, this, this works fine. Okay. So yeah, I'll sacrifice the self with spirit uh, to protect our golem. And that means when he does gain two, he can pay two, but our stuff will still be indestructible. Uh, he'll have eight life, so it won't be dead. But we still get to get in for five next turn. You can put two damage at our phase. It's like a surprisingly robust for, you know, a, what <laughs> deck playing Windscarred Cracks. Okay. Play our Aether Vial. Get in for five. Put him to three. The game's not over. We have path, but that only matters if you play something that we can path. To be fair, I don't know how many win conditions this deck has. Thus far, we've seen Balefire Liege and uh, Fire Main Angels, and we have two answers to Fire Main Angel. I, I don't know if it was greedy or not to try to... Uh, to use that tech edge, which was our colorless source for the Seagate wreckage. Uh, it felt correct at the time to keep him off mana, and I think I stand by that decision. We can cast most things we control. We we draw. All right, let's try to get in there, see what happens. Could just activate needle spires. We'll obviously fire off this path. See what's happening. Oh, the wear tear value. Okay, fair enough. Got the full value, the rest in piece is gone. All right, we still got in for two though. Our opponent is still at one. And now we're gonna play a second blade splicer with a path to exile up. So, needs that wrath. If it doesn't have that wrath, he's dead. And I did need to play it because if he had life gain, like if he had lightning helix plus this, we wouldn't have been presenting lethal even though he's only at one life. So, all right, cathartic reunion. So he's drawn three. Let's see what they are. See if they save him from one life. He has four mana. Oh, the value. It's a go up to two life. Shoot down our something. I guess our Thraben Inspector. Whatever. Blade Splicer, sure. I think we're good here. He needs Lightning Helix to kill a Golem and then take two and go to three. So, but he would die anyways because I just path the Golem. So yeah, I think we've gotten there. In a game that was a match that was far closer than you would have expected when you find out your opponent's playing that. Uh, sure. We're still dead. All right, there's our colorless source for Seagate Wreckage. All right, coming in for two. What's his final? Is his final spell lightning bolt? It's not. We did it. Okay. Well, that was actually really. This deck was kind of impressive. Although to be fair, you know, a deck that plays a bunch of creatures is exactly what I imagine the red white control deck is supposed to be. So uh, that matched up pretty well for us. His opponent, his his deck would have a very hard time against a combo deck or escape shift or anything like that. Whatever. But it is theoretically good against our deck. So that was a bit of a challenge. So nice match.